Once again, there was some news about the Marvel Cinematic Universe this week. First, there's the third solo film of the Ant-Man series, which is not expected to be released before summer 2022. We're talking about rapper and actor T.I. who embody the burglar Dave and Ant-Man. The reason for his abrupt departure is an ongoing court case according to which the 40-year-old is accused of sexual abuse, assault, kidnapping and many other offenses. So it's no wonder that the entire Ant-Man team is keeping its distance and cancelling the role, especially since Disney is in no way known for giving problematic personalities a stage. Instead, there is much more pleasant news about the shooting of Thor Love and Thunder, because as new snapshots from the set reveal, director Taika Waititi will pick up on the well-known theatrical gag from Thor Ragnarok. Then there's the scene in which nameless Asgardian actors perform a play in which the supposed demise of Loki is reenacted. Upon closer inspection, it quickly becomes apparent that Matt Damon, Sam Neill and Chris Hemsworth brother Luke, among others, make a brief appearance. New to the cast will apparently be Melissa McCarthy, who will likely play the stage counterpart to Loki's sister Hela. This is not a groundbreaking story revelation, but it's nice to see that Waititi is sticking to the funny cameo appearances in the upcoming Thor movie. Last but not least, actress Lupita Nyong'o expressed her views on the upcoming MCU adventure Black Panther 2. Despite the tragic passing of her acting colleague Chadwick Boseman last year, the 30-year-old actress is optimistic about the future during an appearance on Good Morning America. She said that great care is being taken by everyone to treat Bozeman's legacy and his well-known role as king with dignity. The Black Panther team is doing everything they can to continue the role in some way, and director Ryan Coogler is said to have some very exciting ideas already. We will probably only find out exactly what this means when the movie is released on July 8th, 2022. A couple of days ago, the news that a new Superman movie is in the works wasn't met with enthusiasm among all fans. The main reason for this is that Henry Cavill, who is very popular with fans, will no longer play a role in the film. The main character, Clark Kent, who he embodied, will presumably not be featured in the film either, because J.J. Abrams' latest project is apparently a reboot with a new story. Rumor has it that the comic book story about the African-American Superman Calvin Ellis could serve as the inspiration for the movie. Abrams says he's looking forward to a new, powerful and also touching Superman story which he and screenwriter Tanae Coates will bring to the big screen. Also, Warner chairman Toby Emmerich is convinced that the Between the World and Me author has the potential to give fans a new and exciting take on Superman. Given Coates' previous works, which have been deeply critical of society, it seems likely that we will soon see the first African-American Superman in a film adaption. What do you think? Does the Superman series really need to get revamped with a new lead character? Or would you rather have seen a sequel with Clark Kent and Henry Cavill? Drop us a comment down below and let us know. Neil Blomkamp's ambitious sci-fi film District 9 was released in theaters in 2009. Blomkamp's own project, the short film Alive in Joburg, which was released in 2005, served as the template for this uncompromising blockbuster in video game aesthetics. With a budget of 30 million US dollars, the film grossed a phenomenal 211 million US dollars worldwide and is still one of the few examples that have downright revolutionized the science fiction genre. As the South African director announced on Twitter a few days ago, work on the sequel District 10 is already underway and is being penned jointly by himself. Charity Copley and Terry Tatchell. Copley, who embodied the main role of Wickes in District 9, thus returns to the sequel to his then screen debut. Nevertheless, we shouldn't expect a release anytime soon because Blomkamp is known for working on several projects at the same time and thus slightly neglecting some of his films. No matter what, we are looking forward to District 10 and will keep you up to date with the latest news. So, feel free to subscribe and look forward to exciting news about movies in series now and in the future. In the night, from February 28th to March 1st, the annual Gold Globe Awards of the Hollywood Foreign Press took once again place in Los Angeles. The event, hosted by Tina Frey and Amy Poehler, wasn't able to surprise really because this year Netflix is again at the top of the winner's list with its countless own productions. In the Best Drama series category, for instance, Netflix's own production The Crown managed to stand up to Disney's The Mandalorian, which is also extremely popular. Miniseries The Queen's Gambit and actress Emma Corrin, Gillian Anderson and Anya Taylor-Joy, along with fellow actor Josh O'Connor, also claimed a number of awards for the streaming giant, cementing its position of power in the serious field. As far as movies are concerned, Nomadland won Best Drama and Borat 2 won Best Comedy, both sharing their victory in the top two movie categories, while the late Black Panther star Chadwick Boseman was posthumously awarded Best Actor in a Drama for his role in 
Mulraney's Black Bottom. The female equivalent was claimed by fellow actress Andra Day for her role in The United States vs. Billie Holiday. As Deadline recently reported, Hollywood stars Hugh Grant and Sophila Lillis will join the cast of Paramount's Dungeons & Dragons adaption. The 60-year-old Brit is expected to take on the role of the antagonist, while his only 19-year-old colleague who made her mark in projects, including Annie Muschietti's two IT movies, will play an as-yet-unnamed role. Both will be inevitably in front of the camera with protagonist Chris Pine, who has been revealed for quite some time. Currently, nothing is known about the content, but the film will most likely be set in the typical Dungeons & Dragons setting full of orcs, dragons, and magic. Jonathan Goldstein and John Francis Daly were appointed as directors a while ago, and the script is also said to have been written by the two of them. Believing the rumors, the film revolves around an adventurer who, together with his mystical companions, wants to find a well-hidden treasure. Still, these are only wild speculations and we will have to wait a little longer before we get any official information. The expected release date of the Dungeons & Dragons film adaption is May 27, 2022. Pleasant news for all fans of the MonsterVerse! A few days ago, not only was there new footage from Godzilla vs. Kong, but the potential running time of the film was also leaked. According to the French website Allocine, Godzilla vs. Kong is expected to run for 1 hour and 53 minutes, which would make it not only the shortest Godzilla movie, but also the shortest MonsterVerse movie outright. Although Legendary Entertainment has not yet made a statement on the matter, the new approach would make perfect sense since the previous movies have always had to put up with the complaint of being longer than necessary. Speaking of longer, in an interview with Screen Rant, film composer and YouTuber Junkie XL revealed another exciting detail. He stated that one of the fight scenes between the two giants will last a whooping 18 minutes. Those who have already seen the first trailer will know which scene is meant, namely the one in which Godzilla sneaks up on one of the aircraft carriers to attack Kong. It will be exciting in any case because Godzilla vs. Kong will be released on March 31st in the US, both in theaters and on HBO Max.